Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to share with you a new technique that I found of recovering the dinette cushions. I did do a previous video where I sewed the dinette cushions and I really liked how those turned out, but I wanted to get a little bit tighter of a fit than I was able to on the last ones and I also wanted to not have to sew. So I've been messing around, I've covered three of the four dinette cushions that I need it covered and I feel like I've kind of gotten it down pretty well and I'd like to share with you guys on the fourth dinette cushion. So come along and we're going to cover these bad boys. So this is what the cushions looked like before, and they weren't terrible, but they definitely gave that super, you know, RV feel to them. And so I really wanted, I'm going for a southwestern feel, and I found this beautiful fabric on Etsy that I ordered, and I believe I got two yards of this, which was barely enough to do all four of these cushions. And you can see, this is what they look like when they're finished. And part of it, especially since there's such a dominant pattern on this um, fabric, I had to lay it out and make sure that all of my um, the patterns were going to line up. So since they're all going to be next to each other, I wanted this dominant line to match up. So I took a little bit of fit angling at the beginning, um, but once I got it figured out, it wasn't too hard. Okay, so the stuff that you need for this project, obviously your dinette cushions. Now, I chose to only recover the back cushions on my dinette. The bottom ones were kind of this like chocolate brown color that is actually gonna go really fantastically with this um, fabric. And kind of the most you can leave and, and not have to change, the easier your renovation's obviously gonna be. And then we, I say we loosely, Sean cut me a piece of um, board and he cut it about an inch shorter all around than the cushion. That way, when it, once it's finished, you can see there's this, but if somebody was gonna push from the top, you're not gonna get poked by that. So you want to be able to have soft the cushiony feel. Um, and the reason why we, the reason why we cut this back piece is because we are actually going to staple the fabric onto this instead of sew a sleeve and shove the cushion in like I did on the last one. So this makes it so I can just be pulling and really get it tight all the way around. So we have a cushion, we have a board that's an inch um, smaller all around, so it ended up being about two inches smaller than the back of the cushion. And then we have a fabric cut to size scissors to cut the fabric and then we have this um, handheld stapler and we used I used the T50 staples um, spray adhesive so we bought this spray adhesive and you want the spray adhesive to to adhere your backing board to your cushion or else you're gonna get a little bit of slip happening and you don't want that also as you are attaching the fabric to the back of the wood um, if it's sliding it's really hard to really get it nice and tight so we've cut the fabric we've cut the board and now we just need to spray this on since I am doing this project inside and I probably should be doing it outside but it's really freezing and snowing outside. I'm going to lay down my fabric the wrong side up and I'm going to use that as kind of my drop cloth to protect the carpet. Um, this, I'm using the 3M High Strength contact adhesive, not spray adhesive, and it actually has a really nice spray that doesn't go all over the place. So I know that I'm gonna be okay doing it on here. So it says to shake it, it says to do it about four to six inches away from the fabric or whatever you're adhering it to, and then you just go back and forth. And then it does recommend doing between one and three, one and three coats, and so I've just been doing two pretty light coats. And then it says, let it sit, whoop, cat. Let it sit for, I think it said like three minutes until it gets tacky so that it doesn't transfer over. So I'm let that one sit. And then you do need to spray both surfaces that you want to stick together.
Now I went one direction and then the other just to be able to get a little bit better coverage of that. And then we just wait for those to get nice and tacky and firm up so that we can push them together. Okay, so it says to let it sit until it gets tacky and doesn't transfer to your knuckle. So it is transferring to my knuckle on this one. And it's just nice and sticky on this one. So this one's ready. Probably has like another 30 seconds to let that one sit now. Okay, so both surfaces are now tacky. So we're just going to lay this on top and center it. All right, now we have spray adhesive done and I have the fabric underneath it already because that's what used as our drop cloth. But we do want to make sure that we're getting the fabric nice and centered um, so that it's going to line up with the pattern over there. Um, so I'm just going to kind of try to make it look nice and even. And then when I pulled it up, scooch that way, kind of see where the pattern lands on there. and just make it look relatively even. Okay, so it looks good. It looks nice and even. And we have both sides pulled up. So when you're stapling this, you want to make sure two things. One, you want to turn over the fabric about a half inch so that it doesn't fray. And then also you want to pull from opposite sides of each other so you do get a pretty even um, wrap and it doesn't get like off kilter. So I'm gonna start down here, folding it over pulling it not super tight but a little bit taut and then just putting that bad boy in right there and then right across I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to pull it in not crazy don't go nuts so on this but you do just want to pull it nice and firmly towards you staple gun pop that bad boy in and then we're just gonna work our way back and forth across it. I'll kind of do here, 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 and then fill in. You're gonna to wanna to have a staple probably every, I don't know, inch or so, and maybe even more than that along the whole outside. So that's what we're gonna work on now. So we have finished all of the sides here, and now we need to do the edges. So this is all tucked under, but what I found worked best is to fold it kind of like a present right here. So up, bring that nice and tight up, and you're going to have a nice right angle at this section here. Staple a few times that and then do a pretty generous fold here because I like this one to be able to come above it it doesn't usually though so we folded that over I'm going to staple this down and then we're gonna do the same thing on the same on the other side we're gonna fold it like a present Fold that under and then make sure it's fairly tight. You don't want to pull it too tight on this one because it will make the edges right here do some weird stuff. Then we're going to secure it. I don't think that actually went into the wood though. So on these ones, you are going to have to work a little bit harder to make sure they sink into the wood.
right, now you have this up. And then I actually will grab this wider so that it is open the width of it. So if you were wrapping a present, you'd do something like this, but then it leaves weird stuff happening. So open it as wide as it will go, lay this flat. And honestly, you could even like, if there's too much fabric happening in there, just cut that off. Open it wide. And then we are going to now secure this, but you are going to have to pull it up because this will make sure it's tight along the length instead of just the width. So to pull it nice. Don't go crazy, doesn't need to be anything super nutty, but you do wanna make sure it is pulled up. Can do both the edges and I'm gonna to try to pull it far, that, far enough up that it can go just one level of fabric into the wood and I'll have to go through the two below it. And then just do the same thing where we're just pulling, sliding this up, pulling it, sliding this up, pulling it, sliding it up. And ideally, I probably should have done it a little closer to the edge so I don't have as much of a flap, but it's probably not that big of a deal. All right, that side is done. Flop around, do the other side. We're all finished and you can kind of see the edges here they look very nice and tidy it's very clean the back side even though it is the back side and won't really be seen it is nice and clean as well and then the other side matches and they both look very uniform so then we line them all together I'm super excited to get these guys into the trailer it's really gonna give a nice pop of color and a little bit of interest in the renovation we're doing thanks for watching guys like and subscribe for more content like this and we'll see you on the next video